Okay, and welcome back students who are taking math for business and finance and math applications. And we're on, uh, we're still on chapter nine, the theory of payroll. And fortunately, this is going to be the last video um, as far as this theory is concerned. Okay, we've covered pretty much everything that you need to know from an employee's perspective. Okay, but now we're also going to, we also need to discuss the employer's responsibility. Um, in one of the previous videos, I had said, and I'm just going to use round numbers here to make things easier. I had said, let's say the employee gets paid a thousand dollars, okay? And I had said that most people, you know, they think that that's all they get paid is that thousand. When in reality, they actually get paid more, okay? Um, and that that's this is what this video is all about, right? I had said, oh, we on a thousand dollars. Let's say we had. Um, $200 in federal withholding and let's say we had $100 in state withholding and another $100 in local withholding and then we had to do our Social Security and Medicare as employees responsibility now remember Social Security was 6.2 um, all the way in the book it was it had a limit of a uh, $110,100 but I had said um, for the year 2015, it's at like 118,000, I think it was 500 or something like that, right? But you only need to worry about that if you ever, if you get paid that amount, okay? And then for Medicare, it was like 1.45% um, on all of your wages, all right? So that ends up being 7.65% for FICA. FICA being Medicare and Social Security. And I had also said that when it comes to FICA, right, the government is, um, they want the employee to pay one half of the FICA. And so this employee and the employer pays one half okay so there you know you're going to have an amount of help withhold and let's just I'm just gonna round this and let's just say 75 bucks for FICA okay well if you're having $75 withheld for FICA the employer is going to also have to kick in $75 for FICA okay this is an additional responsibility for the em employer, you never, ever, ever see that seventy, that extra seventy-five bucks. Okay, uh, I realize it's seventy-six fifty, but I'm just rounding the seventy-five here. Okay, so you never, you never see that additional seventy-five dollars. Okay, because why? When the employer withholds your FICA, right? They're going to withhold in the FICA payable account. they're going to put in your 75 withholding and then they have to match it with 75 okay so that there ends up being 150 dollars in that fica payable account okay now whatever that amounts to ends up being your net pay okay after you've had all of your with your other deductions you end up with your net pay and that's the amount that you see you know in your paycheck but like I said, most people don't realize that they've just gotten paid more than a thousand dollars. You know, right now it's actually a thousand dollars and seventy-five, you know, thousand seventy-five. But that's not the end of it. We also have to consider unemployment. Okay, and what is unemployment? Well. We have what's called FUTA and SUTA, okay? And these are calculated very similar to the way Social Security is calculated in that there's a percentage as the rate and there's a base, okay? Now, FUTA and SUTA are state un federal unemployment and state unemployment, okay? And what that means is that, the um, you know, you're working for an employer, right? And if you quit your job, you, you know, this was created because the government doesn't want 
businesses to be hiring people. Um, just, you know, for a week at a time, a couple days at a time, and always laying them off. They want businesses to hire people and keep people, you know, uh, have the people, you know, stay you know, employed, okay? Not always be hiring and firing and hiring and firing. So what they've done is they've set up the system in that if you quit, you're not able to collect unemployment because it was your option to quit. But on the opposite side of the coin, if the employer lays you off or fires you for, you know, for some reason, well, you don't have any income. Well, now what do you do? Well, you're going to go collect unemployment. Well, where does that unemployment money come from? That comes from the employer. Okay. And what they what they do is that, you know, when you get paid your, you know, a thousand dollars, okay, well, for FUTA, you know, 0 0.8% which would be what uh, eight bucks goes for FUTA, goes into a fund, and it just sits there. And for SUTA, it's you know that would be what fifty four bucks, okay, would go to SUTA, and it just sits there. Okay, so that if for some reason you get laid off or you get fired, you can go and collect that money. Now notice that didn't come out of your paycheck, okay, so. As I alluded to, if you're being paid $1,000 and you think that's all you get paid, no, you were pay, uh, you're actually getting, say, an additional 75 bucks for the FICA, okay? You're getting an additional amount put aside for you for FUTA, and you're getting an additional amount put aside for you for SUTA, okay? So all of this is in addition to what you get, for, you know, as your gross pay which most people don't, you know, they don't realize that they're actually getting that, okay? Now, on how to calculate the FUTA and SUTA, as I had said, it's very similar to the uh, Social Security, okay? There's a base. So on January 1st, everybody starts out at zero as their year-to-date figure, okay? And as you get paid, let's say you get paid... I don't know, $2,000 a month for um, a salary, okay? So at the end of January, you're paid this $2,000, and your year-to-date is 2000 okay? Well, since that 2000 is below this limit, here's the limit of 7000 year-to-date. Since it's below the uh, 7000 that full amount is taxable at the FUTA rate and the SUTA rate. So two calculations have to be made and two amounts have to be set aside. Okay. That will show up on the employer's books. Okay. Now, the next month you get paid. That's 31. So on 228, you get paid an additional 2,000. Now you're up to 4,000, right? And so this amount is now taxable, right? And we do the calculation for FUTA and for SUTA, the same as we did, just like we're doing Social Security. Uh, March comes along, okay? And you get paid an additional 2000 okay? So your year-to-date is now 6000 Well, that 2000 that 2000 is still below this limit of 7000 so that is all taxable and you'd pay the tax on that additional $2000 okay but now let's say in the next month instead of being paid 2000 let's say you did a fantastic job or whatever have you and you actually got a bonus and you're up to I don't know um, let's say you got a bonus of $500 so you were paid $2,500. Now the question is, how much of that $2,500 is taxable? Well, it's the, you know, the amount of $6,000, which was your year to date, from the $7,000. So that right in here, there's $1,000 that's taxable for FUTA and SUTA. Okay? Anything over 
the uh, $7,000, which in this case here, since I have $2,500 is what I was paid, and I only have to pay tax on the $1,000, that means an additional $1,500. That is not taxable. Okay, so the employee, the employer doesn't have to contribute any more um, over and above that seven thousand. Sure, they have to uh, pay the tax on the the one thousand, but from here on out for the rest of the year, they don't pay any additional feuder or suda tax. So if you're an employee starting on January first and you go all the way down to the you know all the way to December, right? Once you hit seven thousand dollars, the employer doesn't kick in any any additional amount. But let's say in October, for some reason there's a new employee okay well and let's say it's October 1st okay. well on October 1st you know that employee is starting out at zero is the year to date okay and so if they get paid 2,000 um, on October 31st right then that whole 2,000 is taxable because he, he's below the 7,000 amount, right? And so you know, always have to be paying attention to the year-to-date for the particular employee. And so when someone's doing payroll, they're always going back and looking at that payroll register that they're filling out, okay, in order to be able to see, you know, how much the earnings are cumulative okay year to date you know how much is the FICA taxable you know uh, and any anything else that they need they're always looking at that information that's on the payroll register but the big important part of that is you know what it what has been paid year to date because that becomes the basis for the calculations of these uh, uh, things like Social Security which has a limit and the FUTA and the SUTA, which has a limit. Okay, so bottom line is that, yeah, the employee, you know, they get paid a gross pay, they have deductions, and they end up with a net pay. And depending upon the, the deductions, each and every individual's, uh, you know, the payroll clerk has to look at each individual to see how their that particular paycheck is being calculated. It isn't cookie cutter. It isn't you know uh, just rinse and repeat. Sometimes it is when you have like a salaried employee, but for the most part, uh, you know 80, 90 percent of your employees, every paycheck is going to be different. And then not only do they have to uh, figure out the employee's paycheck, but they have to come over here and figure out the employer. Okay because the employer has the additional responsibility of the FICA, which is Social Security and Medicare, FUTA, and SUTA. So when they do the payroll, they do the payroll first for the employee, and then they also have to do a second uh, set of calculations for the employer and book all of that information. Okay, so with that said, I'm done with the theory aspect of it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to telephone and speak with an instructor or contact us. And I realize I went through this pretty quick because, you know, notice these are 13, 15, 16 minute videos and there's like nine of them, okay? Just explaining the theory, but you'll actually see the application of this when we're doing the drill problems and the word problems. So, um, you know, the only way you get good at this and you know is by doing by doing the work and doing those assigned problems so i'll see you in those videos and once you're done with that you'll always have an idea as to how your payroll is, is calculated okay see you then